just want to know what, how do you guys like to be like specifically for you guys? How do you guys like to be directed? How do you guys like adjustments and how do you guys like to be directed when you initially get on the set? I go, okay. I can go oh. first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go for it. Girl. Um, I personally am an actor that loves being directed. Like any director that knows how to work with actors as opposed to just like, you know, here's the blocking, walk here, do this. Like any director that really knows how to bring out a performance in an actor, I love working with those directors. Um, and also it's, you know, I think of a scene maybe one way or a character maybe one way, but if a director has a different vision, like getting to play that and see that, that I didn't even think of is so much fun for me. So yeah, I, I love hands-on directors. Like the more you can give me as a director, the more excited I am to perform for you. Cool. Yeah. I also always like to, I love directors who want to take the time and to, to work out the scene, the beats, and do as much rehearsal. I know there's not, that's not always possible, but I think like having the table read a scene like that you can like really prep um, or as an actor, just do that yourself. But like but, uh, to know that the director doesn't want to just move the shots and I get it, sometimes that's just not possible. But I think it's always great if the actor can really, you know, not just say of like, just get thrown into it and you don't even get to feel the energy. I feel like that's really important um, to feel everyone in the room and, and like really lock it in and take that time. And it, your experience with acting, how did, because I know you guys directed um, your short film, The Western. <laughs> how did that, did your acting experience carry over well when you directed? We, we focused mainly on acting at that point point yeah, yeah um we had a really great ad step in and so like i was just like okay um i made sure my shots were the ones that i like were gonna get cut out like we had to do so many it was an insane day but like i just made sure the shot list stayed the same um but it was really impossible to go back and forth to the camera off my horse. Like that was not happening at one point. So <laughs> we really just stuck with the acting. You know, it's one thing if you're directing and acting in the same project, like that's really, really hard to do. That's why, like I personally, I never want to take both of those on in the same project. But like, if you are an actor that's directing, I think that it is really beneficial to have that experience to be able to carry that over because you know what you're looking for, you know, you know what you need as an actor so you can give that to the actors. Like personally, I love directing actors, but like I have no business with anything else with directing. I don't know enough about like shots and lighting and all of that other kind of stuff. Um, but like just directing a performance from an actor, that's the one thing I love to do. And can you guys tell us a little bit um, about your directing experience? So like I've kind of led the directing on our, our shorts and the proof of concept. And like, I think a lot of it has just come from watching my teachers over the years and just being like, there's half of theater school, acting school is you sitting down and observing. That's like what you do mm -hmm. for pretty much hours on end. And that's actually very instrumental. It's, it's, it's amazing. That's why they always say, oh, if you can sit behind a casting um, session and hear actors read, you pick up so much. Well, same thing even with watching a teacher like teach. So there's like, just, just like things like that that I like picked up gems over the years. But also when in film, like I just, I'm a person, I'm like, I'm that kind of person. I'm like, I have a vision of what I want the scene to look like and feel like. And so then I just try to communicate that. I've been working really with Tessa. She's been a great guinea pig for me <laughs> <laughs> to like, just be like, hey, th this is what you're feeling. This is like kind of the emotions. This is the story that's going on in your head. What? And then like, also I'm huge in collaboration. That's also really big for me. I know some directors, maybe they're like, this is it. And I don't want to hear it, but I also, like for this next project that I worked on I didn't have many collaborative open conversation with okay like this is what I'm sensing from the character 
is there something that you see from it or are inspired? Like, let me hear your initial thoughts. And I like to take that and build on that. So when then it comes to the day of directing, we all feel aligned with that character. So that's like, again, pre-work that I like to do, like right before. What about you guys' upcoming projects are you guys working on next? Right now, we've been majorly concentrated on our podcast, FemRegard podcast. Um, and really, we're just kind of ramping up. We do have a really big project, which I'll let Carolina talk about. But we've just been using, especially this time, I know a lot of people have said, like, you know, go out there and make the films that you can with, like, the couple friends that are willing to hang out with you right now in quarantine and make it in your home and whatever. And I get that. And I, there's definitely something to be said about keeping busy, but like we're keeping busy with the podcast and development and, you know, it's whatever works for you. So for the people that are listening that are like, I haven't accomplished anything. I feel so lazy. That's okay too. <laughs> like take the time you need. Yeah. But that being said, uh, we do have something in development. So Carolina, I'll let you talk about it. Yeah. Um, so we are prepping for another proof of concept because our Western is going to also be a proof of concept that we want to circle back to and also eventually fully flush out that, that feature length script and, and get it done. Um, but we're kind of throwing that one um, as another package. And, and now we're working on a film noir, which we're calling a femme noir, of course. <laughs> um, and that's because we uh, want to kind of modernize that film noir world and use kind of change up some of the archetypal characters like the femme fatale and the home fatale. We have both in this feature and, and just, um, but still like I, we, I think Tessa and I can both say that we like the, the whole storyline who done it and, and also just kind of dig deep with certain um, aspects of it. Can you guys talk a little bit about your guys' podcast? We've been doing the podcast now for a little over a year. Uh, we're in our fifth season, um, Femme Regard Podcast. And we're available on all major platforms, including YouTube, as well as our website, which is just femregard.com. Um, but we are marketing to other beginner filmmakers. So the podcast is all about independent filmmaking and we are sharing our journey because we've not been doing it that long and we had no idea what we were doing when we started it. So, you know, we're sharing what we've learned and how we got to where we are and learned the things that we did learn. And then we bring on industry professional guests who know more than we do <laughs> to just, you know, educate and inspire and hopefully entertain um, and we found some really, really cool guests. I mean, obviously that's how we met you, Katrina. <laughs> and like, it's just been awesome to network with these people and learn their stories. And we've learned so much, you know, about the business and, and it's just been a really amazing experience. And we've gotten great feedback from listeners. Like we're so happy that people are enjoying listening to it. So yeah, it's been a dream. Um, yeah, I loved you guys' podcast when I first started listening to it because you guys also bring like a type of energy to it and it's very positive and you guys look very supportive of each other, just like helping each other, freeing each other and it just like just <laughs> feels very welcoming and warming. Maybe my last question would be um, about indie filmmaker. What advice do you have for indie filmmakers? I think the biggest thing that we say all the time is just do it. Like, you know, get that preparation, sure. Like have an idea what you're doing, have people that you can go to when you do have more questions, but ultimately just do it. When you feel like you might maybe possibly be ready, go for it. <laughs> exactly, because you're only gonna learn as you do it, especially if you're a beginner. Like that's, that's the beauty of filmmaking. Like, you know, it's, it's trial and error and project after project and you're only gonna get better as you keep doing it, so. If you guys are interested in hearing more about us, feel free to follow our socials. Um, we're Femme Regard Productions on Facebook, at Femme Regard on Instagram, and at Femme underscore Regard on Twitter. Yeah, and we're just so grateful to be on a platform like yours, Katrina. We are, we love connecting over social media. So yeah, everyone feel free to reach out. If you have ever have questions, we're, we love to support. So we're, we're definitely here for that. <laughs>